In this video, we're going to have a closer look at Python's self parameter. In the previous video in this playlist, we had a look at this computer program here, which consists of a class, and on this line you can see I'm creating an instance of that class, and you can see here I'm printing the ID of that instance, and on this line I am sending a message where the message will invoke this particular method here within the class definition and of course we introduce the use of this word self here and on this line you can see that I'm printing the ID of self and compare that to the printing the ID of my object here so when this program executes what we will actually get is this so this line executes creates the instance here we print the ID of my object which gives us this value here which is the unique identifier for this particular object now this line is being printed because when we call the method this is the first line that executed and this string was placed here and then we printed the ID of self and of course we can see that that is this value here and we noted that this and this were the same which meant that when we actually had this particular message being sent to this object which was based on this class what happened when this message resulted in this being invoked is that self received the id of this particular object that was declared on this line let's continue to consider the self parameter by referencing this computer program here the first thing we can see we have the same demo class and within that demo class we have this method and this method we can see has the same self parameter here now this line is going to create an instance of the demo class so let's map this against the execution space well here's the execution space and when this line executes what we're going to get we're going to get an object created that you can see I am labeling with my underscore object underscore one because that's the name that appeared here in the code and of course this name is going to be bound to this particular object or if you prefer this name is pointing to this object but if we look at the object in the execution space what we have to realize that as this was based on this class then the object will have access to this method so I'm going to show that method appearing in the object as you can see here and it's got the name demo method which corresponds to the name here and in the brackets you can see it has the word self which corresponds to the self here now this self is going to receive the ID of this object if I now go on to look at this line this is going to create another instance of the same class and this one is going to be my underscore object 2 so let's have a see at what happens in the execution space we can see we have the object being created but what we also have to realize is that this particular object is also going to have the method here as you can see demo underscore method and in bracket it's got the word self now on this occasion this word self is going to receive the ID of this object now this particular line of code is a message to this object and we can show that message as illustrated here and of course that message is actually going to invoke this particular method here which in the class can be seen at this point and of course this self will receive the ID of this object now when we actually now execute this particular line which is a message to the other object which I can show in the diagram with that word message there this is going to invoke this method which in the class is shown here but on this occasion this self is going to receive the ID of this object so the point here is that we have this class and from this class we have two instances created two objects 
and each exists in their own right. And when we call on the method here and here that was defined in the class, this method knows it's attached to this object because this gets the ID of this object. Whereas the one over here, this self, is the ID of this object. So this method knows it belongs to this particular instance of this class. I'm now going to amend this program by adding some extra print statements. And here you can see the program. And I've added a print statement in this position. And what this is going to do, it's going to print the ID of self. And here you can see I've actually got two print statements. This one is going to print the ID of the first object created. And this is going to print the ID of the second object created. Now the runtime for this particular program is shown here. So let's go through this one line at a time. This is going to create the first instance. This is going to create the second object. So now in existence there are two objects of this particular class. This line is going to print the ID of the first object. And you can see that appears here. This is going to print the ID of the second object. And you can see that appears here. Now if you look at the IDs, you can see that they are different. And they should be because we have two different objects. Now this line is a message to the first instance of the class, i.e. the first object that was created on this line. And of course what this is going to do, it's going to invoke this particular method here. And this line will output this particular string. Of course this line is going to print the ID of self. So let's have a look at what that is. Well, it's this value here. And if you look, you can see that its ID is exactly the same as this ID here. In other words, what's being passed to this position is the ID of the first object, which makes sense because if you look at this message, it is a message to the first object because this name here is bound to the first object. Now this program statement is a message, but this is a message to the other object that was created. And this will actually cause this method to be invoked. And when we come to execute this line, this is the string we will get out. When we execute this line, what we will see printed is this. And if we look at this ID, we can see that it's the same ID that appeared on this line. And of course this ID was the ID of the second object that was actually created by our program. So what we can say is that this method knows which instance it belongs to because the self parameter receives the ID of that instance. And of course that instance is an object of this particular class. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.